on continued fraction is by William Garland of Grand Blanc. of numbers. At the base basic numbers you have your natural numbers. This is like 1, 2, 3, 5, 57. Counts of physical objects. Doesn't take any, before you had math you had natural numbers because you could look at three rocks and say 1, 2, 3, there's three rocks. Yeah. But as we expand number theory we expand into um, first whole numbers which introduces the concept of zero having a number to quantify not having something. Integers want to include negatives, symbolize I guess by being in debt, but just to expand that knowledge to <laughs> numbers. And then finally, to rational numbers, which is basically any number that can be represented by A over B, where A and B are integers. This is any fraction, 3 fifths, you know, 507 over 23. But the problem is this is not all the real numbers. You include the irrational numbers to get all real numbers. You have numbers like non-perfect squares, square roots, pi, Euler's number, e. These numbers, when you show them decimal notation, they don't terminate. They're not terminating and um, they're also non-repeating. There's no simple pattern. And in short, that means they can be represented by two integers in A over B. But we still need to be able to talk about them. So that's where the idea of continued fractions comes in. A continued fraction is basically the form a1 plus 1 over a2 plus 1 over a3 plus on and on and on. Through each step, you are taking an integer, then you are uh, taking the reciprocal, and then for the denominator of that function, you are then introducing another continued fraction, hence the continuation. Each fraction is a series of other <coughs> fractions. Um, this, in fact, is a simple continued fraction, a more, I suppose, just a general continued fraction would be b1, b2, but we're just going to use ones because that's what comes up most frequently. So, why do we use these and how, how do we get them, basically? As, let's look at an example. You take the square root of 3, if you plunge it into a calculator, you get approximately 1.732. <laughs> <laughs> But that doesn't really help us because we need to be able to do that. So the basic, if you're going to look at a simple fraction, and a continued fraction, excuse me, you need to estimate this value. Um, the easiest way to estimate something, at least in this case, is a floor function, basically rounding down. Um, so rounding down, that's three. Or, excuse me, one. It's one. So your error in this estimation is the difference. Square root of three minus floor square root of three equal to 0.732. We don't really know exactly what this is in this case, but we, we do. It's just <laughs> so anyways, you can use, start using this step. This is basically one iteration of the algorithm you can use to produce these continued fractions. You take your estimate, 1 plus the reciprocal of what remains. So in this case, the reciprocal of 0.732 is about one point. Three six six. You would then take this and take start back over over here. The um, or, sorry, now yeah, so it's one point three six six. So, but when you floor that, it comes equal to one, and so you do again add that. Take this, take the reciprocal. You get one over one plus one over one plus. 1 over 2.76, seven, excuse me, 732. You may notice this is the exact same fraction, yeah, decimal. It is the same no matter how long you look through, which leads this to repeat. So when you take this inverse, you'll get back to here. When you take that reciprocal, you get back to there. 
causing the entire fraction to be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus da 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 da. That's a little painful to write. <laughs> so we have the compressed notation, square root of 3 equals just the sequence of the integers 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, um, right. Fractions.